Now, that was Ms. Works and House in Babatunde Fashola in this elements, given an update of finishing timelines on a number of capital projects, most of them inherited by the Buhari administration, with a strong commitment to deliver before leaving office. But what about the Ogoni cleanup? What's happening with that internationally acclaimed environmental disaster, which for most parts had corrupted the maritime domain and rendered the affected territory unusable for farming and fishing? Well, we have someone who, who's going, who believes that the federal government has done quite a lot in trying to, trying to deliver the cleanup project. And he is Dr. Marvin Deco, environmental scientist, legal practitioner and specialist in contaminated land remediation and restoration. Welcome to the show, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Dr. Deco, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. All right, so let's, let's get into this. This has been a project that we've, you know, very like widely embraced since its uh, inception. Let's talk about the pro progress on this front of this project for the residents and those that is environmentally affected by this in terms of the promises that were made at inception. Oh, well, the project is uh, one that has, uh, was long overdue. It's a project that was delayed by several years. Uh, but I, I want to put it straight, there is, um, a project coordinator newly appointed. I've just completed my tenure last year. So I believe that uh, what we did at the time was crucial. It was important that we got a project that was conceived eight years ago, nine years at the time we started, um, we brought life into it. Uh, so the government showed commitment by providing the necessary um, tools uh, the finance, which was crucial, uh, one of the reasons the project was delayed, uh, was provided. The legal and the institutional framework, too, uh, was provided. And that gave us what we needed to kickstart the project. Um, it's one that the community has been yearning for. As you are aware, the Ogoni people took their case international. And they made a case for environmental degradation of their land. And after several years, uh, the federal government invited UNEP initially to come take a look at and uh, do an investigation. That report made it clear that government needed to act swiftly. And that's what the government of President Muhammadu Buhari did. Coming to office, got a team in place, got an implementation in place, and I had the privilege of um, pioneering the implementation of the first ever environmental pollution remediation project by the federal government. Is a project that uh, we should be proud of as a country that we have successfully initiated something that over four decades, getting to five decades of environmental, of um, oil, oil production in our country uh, wasn't in existence. Uh, what are the next steps? The next step will be to build on what we've started. We made it possible that what was considered difficult is doable. And so there is a project that is addressing the environmental concerns of the Ogoni people. Does it need fine tuning? Yes, it does. Uh, there are a lot of things that need to be looked at. There were talks about uh, restructuring, and for the past one year, uh, under the acting leadership that was in place, uh, not so much was achieved. However, we believe that with a new leadership, a whole lot is expected. Uh, when you start a project, it comes with its challenges, just like when you meet it midstream. You come with your own, with, it comes with its challenges. So bottom line is, are there provisions for ensuring that this project survives political transitions, survives political leadership? Because that seems to be one of the areas we need to be concerned about. Um, are there provisions to ensure that the funds meant for this project are not being um, appropriated for the wrong reasons? Uh, their provisions to ensure that the Ogoni people for whom this project is designed for truly benefit from it. Um, I would make a case for um, a case of a fund directly um, applicable, that is applicable and used for the development of Ogoni alongside the technical provisions of the project. Because the fund so far as it is, is there for the technical operations. But there isn't fund for the community. The livelihood provisions is not enough, and it will be important or necessary to begin to look at how to get funds, whether it's going to be appropriated. 
for the Ogoni people, for the development of the Ogoni community. These are some of the things that um, the government should be looking at going forward. But we are proud and happy that President Momo of the Buari started what in 50 years of oil exploration in Nigeria was unable, or previous government were unable to do. And so the Ogoni cleanup is one that we commend the president for giving us the opportunity to start this. All right, Dr. Dickel, um, I, I got what you said, but then I'm wondering um, if you could tell us, as at the time that you were leaving, um, uh, the headship of the, the technical uh, committee for this, uh, what was the percentage of the job done as at that time uh, in terms of the cleanup? Uh, and then I would also like you to comment on what the uh, OLI, the Ogoni Liberation Initiative, uh, the concerns that they raised in October of last year, uh, when um, uh, on the occasion of the 1,000 days um, uh, of the commencement of the cleanup, when they said that they were not satisfied uh, with the space and the speed of the work. As a matter of fact, they did call it a sham, uh, saying that as at that time, uh, Ogoni people were still not able to drink um, good water and that the question of uh, compensation uh, was not adequately uh, addressed. If you tie that uh, to what um, members of the House of Representatives said earlier in July of last year, you know, uh, members of the committee on the safety standards and regulations, you know, about uh, the concerns that they had too. Um, will you think that uh, the successes that you have reeled out for us in terms of uh, what the cleanup has been able to achieve, uh, do you think that is justified and do you think that it, it, it's, it's in consonance with what uh, the Ogoni people are saying and feeling at this point in time? Right. If you recall, one of the things I said is that the project made, made adequate financial provisions for technical operations, which a $1 billion, it's directed for, towards remediation of impacted land. But after remediating this land, the people who live there, there is very little provision for them. And so if you hear groups, different groups, talking about the impact of the project on the people, not seeing the impact of the project on the people, it's because of the lack of financial provision to take care of the community development projects and other things that the community needs. Uh, we're talking about a community for over four or five decades have been uh, forefront of, of oil production in the country. And this is the first government project that is coming their way. So expectations are high and people will continue to ask for more. Uh, in terms of what was done, we, we laid a solid foundation starting the project. Uh, we, we put together a very strong team. We brought in UNEP who did the initial work. As I sat with them and we discussed and um, put together their terms of reference. I think a whole lot has been reviewed since then. But the truth is that UNIP is there on the, um, providing quality assurance to the process. Talking about whether people are satisfied, um, from the beginning, people thought the project was a scam. In fact, one of, one of the particular challenges that we had was nobody believed that the government was going to bring the money in the first place. So they thought all of this was going to be our stories. But the truth is that um, there is work on ground. A whole lot of those people who were saying the project was a scam, are the ones who are now supporting the project. They want to benefit from the project. But my advice to these people is that this, the money for this project is not for sharing. And any leadership that shares, uh, shares the, the high prep money, it shouldn't be encouraged. It shouldn't be allowed to stay. Money is meant for the project. And the Ogoni people who are overseeing this thing should also be careful so that they don't end up uh, abating people who want to destroy their own only project for remediating their environment. Yes, there is need to ask for more. Yes, there is need to ask for funds to develop the community. But we shouldn't be sharing this money and we shouldn't engage in practices that will undermine the very essence of the project. All right, Dr. Dekul, you've, you've alluded to misappropriation of funds quite a number of times. Would you say this is an issue that the project is currently facing in you know, very clear terms? Also, I want to know, to what extent can the cleanup allow the locals return to earning their livelihood eventually on the wider scale in terms of what the actual um, environmental impact is this for the locals of the area? Uh, well, um, talking about what the project can provide, the project can provide um, a whole lot. We handed over some sites at the time I was living 
completed sites, sites that were already remediated back to Nostra and to the community. A whole lot has been done since then. So the project has returned, has cleaned up certain um, a number of lots, plots back to the community. It's been handed over. And more of this should be going on. I was just talking about the Ogoni people overseeing and watching that funds meant for this project are not appropriated the wrong way. Um, it is for the government and the authorities to ensure that the right set of people oversee the funds and the funds are properly utilized. Uh, that's the only point I was making. Um, it's important that we have UNEP on the project because they continue to oversee and ensure that there is quality assurance and there is also prudent utilization of the funds. So uh, we believe so far things are in order and we all, only want to encourage the locals to ensure that their activism, what they ask of the government, in addition to getting funds for uh, other development projects in the area, they should also provide um, um, kind of um, a supervision in a way, another community level supervision on the general activities of the project, including fund management. All right, Dr. Deckel, I just want to stay on that question a little bit. I just want us to please, if you could please share with us and educate us better as to how exactly will this benefit the locals when the, when the project is over. In very clear terms, for of course the layman who doesn't even understand why this is all going on. How exactly will this impact the average man's life in Ogoni land? Well, the Ogoni people are mainly, uh, the occupation is fishing and farming. And when there is an oil spill, it destroys the, the land, the, farming, the farmland, it destroys the waters. So the occupation of fishing and farming is no longer available to the people. And that has been the case for the past four decades. And what this project has, is offering the people is every land that has been remediated, like the one we handed over to the community some time back, that land can be put back to farming. So they are recovering their occupation. They are also um, recovering their sources of livelihood and business as well. The more important thing is that the environment, because as long as you have crude in the system, it gets into the food chain and that could be a hazardous to health. And so their health too is being protected. A part of the project was to do a health impact study. That is a study that is going to be able to tell uh, how much of this has impacted the health of the community and how to also um, deal with that in terms of providing um, mitigation um, activities. So there have been health studies and health impact studies and also institutional um, stud studies of health institutions in the area. This project is one that uh, over five decades of the existence of oil pollution, um, pollution in the community, um, for once there is a government that has shown commitment and concern to solving the problem. All right, you, you've said um, very kind words about the Buari administration, you know, in terms of the commitment uh, that it has shown on this uh, project. Uh, but I'm wondering, the $1 billion uh, funding uh, for this exercise, uh, how was it sourced? Um, uh, does it include some component from the Nigerian government? And how much of, um, uh, how technically involved are Nigerian firms and stakeholders? you know, in this uh, exercise? How, how, how much of Nigerian um, expertise did you have to use uh, while you were there? Well, uh, the, the entire project is, uh, is managed by Nigeria, and we use uh, Nigerian expertise. Almost the entire uh, team that uh, we put up, uh, we had the privilege of bringing in very young scientists, and most of them Nogonis, which we trained them on basic skills and um, on remediation. In fact, in partnership with, with UNEP, we sent some of these people to Geneva for further training. The entire technical team are mainly indigenous. Funding for the project is from the IOCs, from the joint ventures, and that is how it's been sourced. Uh, so the government, through the joint venture, is providing the funding. All right. You, you said that uh, part of your recommendation going forward will be uh, for funding to be made available uh, to the locals, to the community. I, I'm wondering, isn't that what NDDC uh, is supposed to be doing anyway? Uh, and of course, if you expand that, you know, the Niger Delta uh, Ministry also, 
uh, are you saying that the Ogonis are not um, getting any benefit from those institutions, from the ministry and from the NDDC? Well, uh, you, you made a case of uh, different community groups asking for more action activities and support from HyPrep. Obviously, because there is lack of support from elsewhere, that's why all the attention has been on HyPrep. And that remains the case till tomorrow. In Ogoni land, every, all everybody can see is high prep. In fact, high prep is seen as a government. People come to me and say, well in office, that our, our roads are bad. There is no electricity. There is no water. I mean, these are the basic um, responsibilities of government. But these things are not in the, in the community. And so when there is a project like this, the community will look up to that project to provide all of this. And so if there is additional fund, for, to help the project, because the project must survive the in the community. The project must be received properly by the community. That is absent to a large extent, because all you see, most of what you see is agitations for more. And how do you get more? By putting aside fund that will be directed towards development of the community. That's what I'm saying, in all addition right. to the technical work that is going on. That's, that's really great to hear. Now, Dr. Tegela, before we let you go, let's talk timelines very quickly and quite briefly. To you. How much more time do we have to see in the end of this project? And what do you possibly suspect could pose a challenge to that projection? Well, time initially was five years. Uh, five years is, uh, is gone. In the, I mean, we've almost completed this five, five years. Uh, a whole lot of work is yet to start. Uh, I, I think one of the greatest challenges we'll have with the project will be more of political intervention because as political leadership change, that is going to adversely affect the project. Um, it's something that the administration and the leadership of the project needs some level of protection to ensure that there isn't, um, uh, they're kind of insulated from political changes um, overseeing the project. Um, while in office, again, I got this question a whole lot of time. Uh, how do you think the project is going to survive political transitions? Um, I think that is an area that the authorities need to look at closely and see how people who are appointed to lead the project are allowed to do their job and do it for the benefit of the project and not specific um, individuals who may want to have their way. All right, Dr. Marvin Dekel, we want to thank you for joining us on the program. And we hope that uh, uh, Ken Sarawiwa will be happy uh, with the extent of work that has been done uh, uh, in that um, environment. We hope that he will be happy, you know, listening to you, hearing you, you know, hope uh, to the people. Dr. Marvin Dekel, an environmental scientist and a legal practitioner, thank you for joining us.